1970s, we had what was known as white flight, going to the suburbs as fast as you could, building offices out there, building houses out further and further. And, uh, and the pool of workers kind of followed it. We had a transit system at that time that worked. Uh, but times have changed. Uh, the old rule isn't there anymore. Nationally, in the real estate business, you see that office, office vacancies in the suburbs are climbing, they're shrinking downtown. For an interesting reason, I think. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's the manpower. There's no greater expert around on people and, and also employment needs. He says that we're going to go through a tremendous labor shortage of skilled workers. Uh, it's been kind of masked by the fact that the last three years since 08, we haven't been hiring any people. But industry is going to find, now that our economy picks off, that there aren't that many skilled workers out there. And they're definitely not the suburbs. That's number one. Number two, young people today live together, uh, live apart, get married, don't get married, but they don't have children until their mid-30s and that age. Those are the people that when I grew up, if you didn't have kids by the time you're 22, there's something wrong with you. And, and you had to live in the suburbs. So you've got that monstrous labor pool downtown right now. Because they want to live in the urban center. They want to live where the action is. So what's going to happen, I think, is that the companies who depend on talent, and that's the only thing that makes companies grow, creative, innovative talent. And I realize the only place you can find it is downtown. So I think we're going to see a push of companies coming back into the urban center from the suburbs and beyond the suburbs. And uh, so I'm very optimistic about downtown right now. 37% of the companies in the United States right now say they cannot get skilled talent. That's up from 30% only four years ago, so it's climbing. The labor shortage will bring people downtown. John, what do you see? is sort of a, a, a tug of war because you're right, I think companies re recognize that they need to attract young talent. Young talent wants to work downtown, but on the other side is that it does in, uh, cost a little bit more to, to, to work downtown and to locate offices downtown. So we need to get that the CEOs and whatnot to recognize the value uh, of being downtown short-term oriented, and that means cost efficiencies, and it's simply more efficient sometimes is to stay out in the suburbs of park and whatnot. that. So we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, like dabblers, or what I would call it, and then, but sometimes they just can't cross that, that threshold. So, but I think downtown really is becoming more uh, vibrant on the entertainment and on the, you know, the restaurant side of the world. Mike, I don't know what you're seeing in with your uh, patrons. Um, I'm in the old guy section, and you guys don't like sound bites. You're <laughs> <laughs> told only sound bites. That, those sound bites were amazing. <laughs> Not so 30 seconds or less. I'm a chatter younger. Well, that's just good job.
either they've gone away and come back because they were lazy to come here, they realize that we have a lot of big city amenities and it's easier to live here than it is in many other places. Um, or it's, it's creatives who never left who said, I want to live in a cool city. I want to live in a place that has a high quality of life. And so they're just doing it. They didn't wait for a, a GMC committee to say, okay, we bless this area of the city, now go and develop it. They're just doing it. And that's what I think really exciting about the future of the world. I think to John's point, though, the message has to trickle up because right now, young people obviously get it, and the youngest relative, you know, youngest 45 and under, those are the people who are, who are a part of the downtown Milwaukee's I mean, downtown Milwaukee's average age is 30.3 years of age. It's the fifth youngest city in America. So somehow, all these people who are going to restaurants and bars and clubs and shows, that message has to trickle up, and that message has to be carried forward by our civic leaders and by our appointed individuals so that it does reach the people that John would work with so that they would actually have a better understanding of what Milwaukee is instead of, it, instead of what their knowledge of what Milwaukee is, which Our restaurant business is cyclical. We go through cycles. City cycles go through cycles. When I first looked at our restaurants, we're catering to a certain demographic. Now we're catering to a completely different demographic. And, and you have to be nimble and you have to adjust that demographic and listen to what they're saying. Today's people, younger people, communicate completely different than they did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And how you tap into that and how you create an environment that they want to be a part of is the key to the growth of the city, I think. And, you know, we've tapped into it. We did a little social experiment in our company where our, our, our customer demographic is aging, and as you get older, you retire, you move away, you do other things, you don't go out as often. So one of our restaurants, the Rumpus Room, we tried to bring in a, a very young demographic, very much out of our comfort zone, but we realized it's very important for us to do that. And the experiment so far has thus worked out really well. We're driving with younger people and getting them familiar with their brand. And I think the same thing exists in the city. You have to be able to do that. You have to attract them to the things that they want to be around. So that communication is extremely important, though, because that's really what designates the reason why younger people see the city differently than older people see it. Younger people see the city differently because they don't listen to radio. They have iPods, iPhones, and, and they podcast stuff, so therefore they're impervious to the pain of Mark Belling and Charlie Sykes. <laughs>
from 3,000 people saying, we want to see the Partridge family here. <laughs> you would probably react to that, right? Yeah. Um, I'm just hoping. <laughs> 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 First they find out who the Partridge is. <laughs> I saw the album down there. But I think once these, these groups can kind of come together and, 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 and branch off from the network, uh, socializing to a who's going to make the decision. They are finding, I have a tenant that we're going to announce in a couple of weeks, who told me it cost him twenty dollars to $25,000 a person to hire somebody and to train them up to their level. Now this person has to grow from 50 to 120 people in the next year and a half. That's 70 people. That's a million and a half dollars they're going to be spending on recruitment. When you spend that money on recruitment, you don't want to worry about losing jobs because you're going to have to replace them you want to be downtown, you want to make it as comfortable as, as you can for your employees. You want good area, you want to be where they can walk, they can bike to work, you can't do that this way. Young people today want to do that. That's all the way up to 35. And your, and your figure, the average age of downtown being under 35 is amazing here. I don't know where it is. But that's where the action is. Right here. Well, to that point, though, don't forget Milwaukee was late coming to the party on all these beautiful condos and everything downtown on the, on the river. But they're also really on top of the fact people like Barry Mandel who are building apartments downtown Milwaukee because that's the new mode of where people are going to be moving. They might not necessarily be as the tradition used to be buying places. They're going to want to live in an apartment and experience downtown. And they've already seen the boom in bust of what that means to buy a place at this point in time. So well, it's really important for Milwaukee to have an entrance. Later, but it's really important for Milwaukee to have an entrance. Like two people can come to the city and experience the city and apartments. something say to me the other day, 
So are we supposed to just sit around and wait for all the old white CEOs to die in this town? <laughs> she said, no, we're just, we're just going to do it. And, and th that doesn't denigrate them. I mean, they're all, like, you know, some of those old white CEOs, the old guys, and they're, 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 running, they're running good companies, and they contribute a lot to this community. But at the same time, the folks that are in the boardroom I think we need to look around and say, okay, who's at the table right now? And is there anybody in the room here who's under 35? Because what makes for creative and innovative solutions in a creative and innovative community is diversity. I mean, it, that, that's what it's all about. So we, we've got to have it from the bottom up and the top down. We're looking to get it from the community. And to follow up on that, these kids have no thought about diversity, no prejudice, exactly. nothing. They're right. They're colorblind. No, they are but, absolutely But I right. point out something else that they can use a lot of energy. The only reason they will leave downtown is because of the education system. And you know, the issue is I've introduced these younger people on MBS and help solve the problem Absolutely. of how we're going to educate kids in the city and not move to White Ridge Bay, not move to, some people call it White Folks Bay, I won't do that. Yeah. <laughs> say that people, you can't get people to Milwaukee, but once you get them here, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> they won't leave. Um, yeah, exactly. So, when you came here for three weeks vacation and you haven't left, it's been how many years? 18 years. Um, we just have to believe in ourselves and believe that we, we can um, be the community we all envision that we want to be. We're on our way. I think part of that comes up from having people who represent us to represent the image that we are, to actually understand who we really are instead of having the old idea that um, we're only about the art museum and the MSO. Um, and I'm saying that as a guy who definitely is not necessarily about that and what our database is about. I mean, I just think you have to be representative of what the whole of Milwaukee is. I mean, the whole of Milwaukee is about, it's about the rooftop, you know, like after you walk into the summertime, you know. It's about, you know, what happened at Joe's place, at, you know, at Rumpus, you know, sometimes people are outside. It's about, you know, people at the widespread panic all sitting outside and smoking and drinking in between the show. I mean, it's a totally different Milwaukee than some executive thinks Milwaukee is who actually manages us. Ten seconds each. Stories were about shootings. I don't need to know that stuff. I, I, 
I'm not saying we should censor it, but you know what? Let's let's come up with the ways that we can put a positive spin on our city. <laughs> There's, there's two things. When you talk about beauty, um, I, I think that's a, a, a wonderful discussion because you know Milwaukee really needs to get over its public art. 